Hey guys, Andre from High Performance Academy. Welcome back. We've been a little bit busy for the last four weeks building a race car and unfortunately that has meant that we've had to cut back on our webinars. So it has been a little bit of a break and really excited to get back into the swing of things. There's been a lot that has happened over the last four weeks and I don't want to spoil the surprise too much because a lot of what has happened over the last four weeks has been filmed for our vlog. So 100% you should be checking that out there. Let's have a quick sneak peek, we'll head across to my laptop screen right now. And uh, this is episode 2 of our Toyota SR86 build. Now if you have been hiding under a rock, we struck a few problems with our Toyota 86 race car, our black race car that had the 1UZFE, and if you have been following us for a while, uh, you will know that we were building a 4.5 litre version of the Toyota 3UZFE engine to go in this, mainly because Ben blew it up, or blew the 1UZ up last year, or put a big hole in the side of the block. Not actually his fault, but I digress. Anyway, the progress with that kind of ended up getting a little bit glacial, partly caused by COVID delays uh, anyway we ended up in a situation about five weeks ago where it was pretty unlikely we were going to end up getting the Ross pistons delivered from the US in time for our machinist to machine the block, get the block to us, get it together, put it in the car etc etc. So we were faced with one option was to just not race, we're not really that keen on that, the other option was that we look at our other uh, alternative engine choices which was the Toyota SR20, sorry the Nissan and SR20 VE turbo engine that we built and had installed in our 350Z. We did this as part of our practical engine building course as a worked example. And that engine's basically been sitting in the hole in our 350Z for, I don't know, 12, 18 months or so pretty much unloved and untouched and it's a pretty good combo it's built to support somewhere around about 650 700 horsepower runs a Garrett GTX 3076 R Gen 2 turbo which should be good for around about the 650 horsepower mark uh, got pretty good bits on the inside nothing too over the top but we're not trying to reinvent the wheel it was built, it was ready to go, so we made the call to swap that in. And again, I'm not going to really go too far into the details. If you do want to watch that process, I suggest you head across to our YouTube channel and you search out our uh, SR20 VE Turbo Vlog updates. There's, I think, three episodes in there at the moment. We will be dropping our fourth episode at the end of this week to get you up to date. So it was uh, a lot of work for the last four and a half weeks from the entire crew, as well as some ring-ins, the video that I just brought up was the Vinifab fabrication episode where the guys from Vinifab came down from Christchurch and helped us out with some of the bigger tasks. We do have an in-house fabricator, Jimmy, however, with the huge amount of work that, that was there to do, it was pretty unlikely that Jimmy was going to be able to get through all that on his own. So Lars and uh, James came down and gave us a hand, really appreciative of all their work. It's next level as always. And again, if you've been watching for a while, you'll know that Vinifab were the crew responsible for the fab work on our FD. RX-7 which is also amazing. Anyway um, again I'm not going to sort of ponder on too much of what went on. Long story short to be a bit of a uh, sort of suspense breaker we did get the car finished but uh, it didn't quite go to plan so uh, we'll jump ahead to modern day. We had our first race of the series uh, on the weekend so how that works is we have a test day on the Friday this is at a racetrack called Teratonga around about uh, two and a half hours to the south of where we are here in Queenstown headed down for the Friday practice and then the qualifying and race is on the Saturday all done and dusted by Saturday afternoon we had had a chance to shake the car down a couple of times at our local racetrack Highlands Motorsport Park had a few teething issues as you'd expect when we've changed just about everything in the car however things did progress pretty Pretty sharply and went from bad to worse when we did actually get to the track. So jump across to my laptop screen. Uh, ben did our test session. We had been fighting some cooling system issues from our test session at Highlands. That continued into Ben's first practice session. I went out and did probably about 10 or 12 laps and ended up with the engine suffering from a, a misfire. Well actually it wasn't a misfire, it was running on three cylinders. Uh, the result of that or the cause of that I should say is this little guy here, safe to say uh, he's not looking as good as he should. So completely blown the ground strap off the number one spark plug which when you see this as a tuner or an engine builder you know you're not going to find a lot of good things happening inside the engine. 
at the same time uh, we had also blown a lot of coolant out and we were suspicious that we had uh, a potential head gasket problem but uh, some of the issues that we were having looked very much like also a potential airlock in the cooling system as well. Some of those symptoms can kind of uh, pr come out as, as very similar. So that was what we were faced with anyway. So I uh, pulled the head off at the track. Uh, this is what we're faced with on the top of the block. So number one piston, you can see that it's got some fairly significant spattering of aluminium. The piston itself actually looks fine. Uh, so we had a lot of people, I put this up on my own personal Instagram, I had a, a lot of people say to us, oh, it's, it's suffering from detonation, clearly. Well, yeah, I can see why that might be the go-to option. Uh, however, there are a few reasons why that's actually not the case. First of all, if we look at the piston crown, uh, we can see that normally, with detonation at least, uh, you're going to see severe pitting around the outside of the, uh, the crown, so that's on the intake side or the exhaust side. We've, we're seeing none of that. The only spatter that we've actually got there is from what you'll see in a second uh, from the cylinder head. Now, the issue is uh, the level where running with this at the point that we were on the tracks, about 14 psi peak, it was making about 450 wheel horsepower, it's also on E85 with a really conservative tune up so a little bit rich and a little bit conservative on the timing so at that point with a 9 to 1 compression engine detonation is, is almost going to be impossible, you can tune well past MVT uh, on E85 with that compression, that boost level, you're simply not going to hurt it, so something else uh, was going on there. We cycle through, uh, this is number 2 cylinder uh, and we can see there's some ugliness just starting here between the two exhaust valves. So this is about the hottest part of the cylinder head. So that's number two. Everything on number two other than that actually looked pretty good. Uh, where things get a little bit more serious and the root cause of our problems, you can see the damage to the combustion chamber on number one. So a little bit hard sometimes when you are diagnosing these failures to sort of figure out exactly the the sort of uh, series of events that's, that's transpired to get to this. At the moment what we think has happened here is that we have had uh, a heat gasket issue or a cooling system airlock. The heat gasket I'll show you in a second, that's also not looking flash, definitely was leaking but it's a case of which came first, we're not 100% on that. Uh, but what we ended up with we believe is a situation where essentially there was a big steam pocket or air pocket in the combustion chamber in the cylinder head around number one. That air lock would be pushed forward in the cylinder head essentially by the way uh, the water pump works. That's why number one is looking really ugly. Number two is not too bad but obviously not ideal either. So what this does is it means that the uh, we can't get, evacuate the heat out of the combustion cha chamber or combustion charge temperature. Uh, the heat can't get dissipated out of the ground strap on the spark plug. So first thing that happens is the ground plug ground strap on the, sp the spark plug starts to glow. That creates pre-ignition. It creates a ignition source uh, for the fuel and air as it enters the cylinder. Pre-ignition is much more damaging than detonation or knock as well. Uh, we're probably really lucky that the piston looks as good good as it does. Normally pre-ignition you're going to end up melting a hole through the crown of the piston or blowing the side out of the piston in, in merely a few engine cycles. So we're probably only saved by the fact we're making such modest power levels at such low boost. The damage from pre-ignition just like detonation tends to uh, get exasperated as the specific power levels rise. So obviously not a lot of good things to talk about here and we have a quick look at that head gasket and we're running a uh, Tomei 1.2 millimeter head gasket here and we can see uh, particularly here around number one cylinder this is the sign of that damage now that on its own is bad enough however things for us progressed one step further it looks like I didn't actually take a photo of that which is or didn't import a photo of that which is uh, not that helpful we also in the process managed to end up damaging the turbine wheel on our brand new GTX 3076R Gen 2 turbo not stoked. Uh, to make the matters worse we only have about three weeks to turn the car around for the next round of our racing which is coming up obviously we don't want to miss that so uh, we've got a little bit of work to do Needless to say, we'll be keeping you updated on our vlog of what's going on there. So again, if you do want to get a little bit more background on what's been going on with that build and stay up to date, check out the vlog on our YouTube channel. Uh, moving on, if you have been following our FDRX7 build, you'll know that we went to a drive-by wire conversion and we used, because of the uh, factory Mazda throttle body with the triple throttle 
uh, butterflies, it's a little bit difficult to uh, convert this easily and keep the, the factory functionality to a single drive-by-wire throttle body. Yes, I know there are conversion kits on the market to use GM LS throttle bodies, but uh, it's not what we wanted to do. So we used the BMW S54 drive-by-wire motor, mounted that down on the alternator bracket and used a push rod to actuate it. And that worked really well pretty cheap and effective option as well however uh, as was, was pointed out to us and I just wanted to show you uh, there are actually aftermarket options which are a little bit neater and a little bit smaller so this one is from GenV and uh, we've got two of these drive-by-wire actuators from GenV which are destined for our 3U ZFE when we get that up and running so we'll be running one of these per bank for drive-by-wire control on our individual throttle bodies so as I mentioned really small quite a light package as well so easy to package into even a very tight engine bay. Uh, also designed with a lot of flexibility around the actuator mounting off this little plate here. It's got multiple mounting holes making it really easy to uh, get your actuator movement to align so it works nicely with what's going on with your throttle body butterfly as well. It's important to match the movement of the two bell cranks otherwise you get into a situation where uh, it's going to affect the the opening versus travel of your drive-by-wire motor. Uh, so those are a proper motorsport design drive-by-wire actuator as well. A little bit more pricey than the BMW S54 option but for those where uh, budget may be not an issue, definitely it's a, a good option to look at. Uh, now we've obviously had a lot of stuff going on. I've just shown you through the uh, the vlog updates on our SR86 build but another one that we launched over the time that we have been building the car uh, was this video here for you to check out uh, my laptop screen again. Uh, so this was an interview that we shot back at the Sydney Jamboree back before Covid kind of hit and the whole world came to a grinding stop. Unfortunately this event actually got rained out but we had the opportunity to talk to Jim from Croydon Racing Development and also so Nitto Performance Engineering. So Jim is probably one of the uh, original guys out there in the import scene from Australia, uh, one of the tuners who was working in the industry back when I just first started learning about cars. Huge wealth of knowledge and Croydon Racing Developments, which was his company at the time, uh, very well respected. He's since moved on and founded Nitto Performance Engineering, basically through running Croydon Racing Developments. He saw the need for some aftermarket components that were going to be up to the task of uh, what tuners and engine builders were throwing at these engines, particularly now when we're looking at the uh, Nissan uh, RB26 here. Uh, two and a half thousand plus wheel horsepower is, is not out of the question. And the sort of stresses and strains that go into producing that sort of power obviously are going to cause a lot of damage to, to low quality engine components. So we talked to Jim about the design philosophy that Nitto use, the testing that they use and also uh, how they select the, the material for their crankshafts and for example uh, with the RB26 which is seeing a lot of development still even though it's getting on a bit over in Australia and here in New Zealand. Uh, we've seen particularly in the R32 GTR drag racing scene there's a lot of toing and froing with world records between in this case Croydon Racing Developments and Matooks and these guys are pushing these engines harder and harder so uh, they actually had to step up to a different material in the crankshaft they went to I think it's EN40B so we talk about that where the advantages in that material are versus the cost etc so if you're interested in learning more a little bit more about the aftermarket performance world when it comes to developing these components go and check that video video out and uh, before anyone complains as well back when we shot this video uh, Croydon Racing Developments did hold the R32 drag racing world record uh, from what I understand now I think at the moment Matooks have taken that back but you need to understand this is a pretty fluid thing it sort of tends to uh, be constantly moving around as one person goes faster and pushes the others to continue so go and check that out anyway and lastly for today uh, we are running a giveaway 
away with our sister company Racecraft. So Racecraft, if, again if you've been hiding under a rock, uh, this is a very similar company to High Performance Academy although it specialises in online education teaching people how to build, develop, optimise and drive a race car better. Setup is a really big aspect of this, we've already got our wheel alignment fundamentals course out along with our corner weighting fundamentals course, a practical corner weighting course and we are running a giveaway which is for a BG Racing digital camber gauge so that's this little guy here, uh, does camber as well as caster uh, and to work with that with the caster side of things there is also a set of the BG Easy Sweep uh, turn plates so uh, you place these under your front wheels and basically they're essentially a greased plate that allows you to very easily turn the wheels without moving the car. Uh, also the Easy Sweep uh, turn plates have 20 degree markings on it which makes it very easy to accurately turn your wheels out 20 degrees in 20 degrees which is required when you are doing your caster setup. Uh, along with this we are also giving you our motorsport wheel alignment course to teach you how to use these components. Total value of that package deal is a thousand US dollars over a thousand US dollars. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about car setup and getting a, that package deal there, uh, there's 18 days left for this giveaway there's zero risk getting involved so head across to the link I'll get Scott to drop into the comments and you can get yourself into that drawer best of luck we will ship that anywhere in the world as well so don't think that if you're not in New Zealand you're going to miss out all right give me a few moments here and we'll get started with today's webinar if you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed we release a new video every week and if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.